It's been a while since we had a new Subnautica game, the last one being Below Zero, launched in May 2021, but the itch for an epic exploration survival game still remains. In this video I will be sharing with you 9 games that will help you scratch that itch to a various degree. Some of them are old, some of them are new, but all of them manage to evoke the thirst for the unknown and the exploration, together with base building of the original Subnautica brought in 2018. I will list them from the least evoking to the most evoking, almost Subnautica alike, and I will be commenting which aspects of each game remind me of Subnautica so that you might find that game that suits you perfectly. I will be rating them in terms of general game grade, something out of 10, and also a Subnautica likeness score. At the end, I will be giving you an honorable mention of an up and coming survival game that just might provide that perfect mix that is coming very, very soon to early access. Number 8. The Long Dark. This survival game is a stark contrast to Subnautica in terms of its setting. Instead of the ocean depth, The Long Dark places you in a harsh, snowy wilderness of the Canadian North after a global disaster. It provides completely different kind of survival experience that is primarily focused on battling the elements and wildlife, rather than exploring alien biomes and ruins. The Long Dark's gameplay is based on managing vital resources like warmth, hunger, thirst and fatigue. The game doesn't feature any base building mechanics like Subnautica, but it does offer a wide range of explorable structures and areas. The atmosphere of The Long Dark is also remarkably different, focusing on the desolation and isolation of a surviving alone in a cold, unforgiving environment. The game has a strong emphasis on story, with narrative-driven single-player campaign that is divided into episodes. Each episode presents new challenges and locations, keeping the gameplay fresh and engaging. The story is immersive and well-crafted, with a sense of mystery and a suspense that can be compared to the intrigue of Subnautica's alien world. Despite the differences in gameplay and setting, The Long Dark can still scratch that survival game itch with its challenging survival mechanics, engaging story and detailed and an immersive environment. However, it offers a different kind of appeal than Subnautica, with a focus on realism and survival against the elements rather than the exploration and the discovery of the alien world. For its immersive atmosphere, challenging survival mechanics and engaging narrative, The Long Dark gets an 8.5 out of 10 in gameplay and fun factor. However, due to its vastly different setting and gameplay mechanics, it gets a 3 out of 10 on the Subnautica alike score. The next game, number 7, is Occupy Mars the Game. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of exploration-driven survival games and to that degree Occupy Mars does scratch that itch. The game sets you on the surface of Mars, where your base that you have just arrived gets blown to smithereens, leaving you in a capsule with some basic tools, limited amount of food, water and oxygen, and a will to survive. Sounds familiar? Oh wait, it's just how like story in the original Subnautica, well, not the sequel, begins. Although the game sets you on the surface of the red planet, and for sure that will evoke any that won't evoke any thalassophobia, the thrill of exploring and what is beyond the next crater, visiting derelict bases, finding abandoned tablets, driving around in vehicles reminded me a lot about Subnautica and its diving in my trusty Yellow Roger, which was the name of my sea moth. Scanning on a new parts and discovering new biomes. While the biomes part is kinda lacking and bland in Occupy Mars, the game compensates to a great degree in the base building department and the resource gathering as well. Base building is satisfying, uncovering new technologies in the tech tree is fun and gathering resource while a bit tedious in the beginning can be automated and is definitely more involved and fun once you get your vehicles. Also, like Subnautica, you can grow plants in your base, convert them into food source and have full-blown botanist tech tree to pursue, from growing tiny potatoes in the incubators all the way to majestic apple trees in the domes. The part where Occupy Mars differs from Subnautica, apart from its setting, is in its technical depth. While Subnautica is less concerned about technical inner workings of your base, sure you get some solar panels, generators, but Occupy Mars requires you to build solar panels, 
connect them to the batteries, use transformers, set up the entire power grid with real procedures and cons producers and consumers, and there are consequences for not having enough power. For example, your plants could die, your oxygen recycle won't work, and similar. Same depth goes for water and oxygen, and other aspects of the game. While the game does not have the technical depth of stationeers, it sits somewhere between Subnautica and stationeers. For fun exploration gameplay, deep tech tree and well-executed technical systems, as well as fun base building, I give Occupy Mars a game an 8 out of 10 on a fun score, and a 4 out of 10 on the Subnautica alike score. Number 6. No Man's Sky. If you don't know about No Man's Sky, then you have either just discovered gaming or have you been living under a rock. No Man's Sky is one of the most retold stories of redemption of modern game history and a game that, although unstructured, does evoke that feeling of exploration of the procedurally generated universe, along with some great base building on the side. It is a fantastic game that can be configured to have stronger emphasis on the survival elements and the general look of the game when playing reminds me a little bit of Subnautica, and when building underwater bases, yes, it's possible, does remind a bit of Subnautica. The game also has a story, but, uh, but apart from its visual style, there is little to no resemblance to Subnautica, actually. Don't get me wrong, No Man's Sky is a fantastic game and very fun to play, with intricate base building, varied game universe and to explore and discover, settlements, fleets, the game is a mile wide, but sometimes feel like inch deep. If you enjoy many loops that the game has to offer, it is a great experience that can be played endlessly, well, quite literally, and the support it has gotten over the years has been nothing short of legendary. I've seen For an amazing things. universe, great base building, infinite things. variety, many game loops and general feeling of exploration and discovery, the game gets 9 out of 10 in gameplay That's and fun so factor, me, and for a visual style that reminds of Subnautica, it gets 4 out of 10 on the Subnautica alike score. Number 5. Sunken Land is another survival game that captures the same underwater exploration and survival aspects of Subnautica. Set in a post-apocalyptic world where the Earth has been flooded, Sunken Land offers both land and underwater exploration similar to Subnautica. The game's environment is rich, with a variety of underwater biomes to explore, each presenting unique challenge and treasures. The game also features a crafting system that allows players to be build bases and vehicles much like Subnautica. However, Sunken Land differs from its, in its focus on multiplayer gameplay, where Subnautica is primarily single-player experience. The game also has a more post-apocalyptic feel compared to the alien environment of Subnautica, which might appeal to players who enjoy games with a little darker atmosphere. Sunken Land does a great job of, in creating an intriguing and dangerous underwater world to explore, with an added bonus of a multiplayer collaboration or cooperation. The game, survival and crafting mechanics offer a familiar gameplay loop for those who enjoy these aspects of Subnautica. For its engaging underwater world and gameplay, Sunken Land gets a 7 out of 10 in gameplay and fun factor. As for Subnautica like score, due its underwater exploration, base building and crafting mechanics, it gets a 5 out of 10. Number 4. Breath Edge is a space survival game that shares some similarities with Subnautica. Like Subnautica, Breath Edge starts with a character surviving a disaster, this time a spaceship crash. You must explore the wreckage of the surrounding space environment to find resources and craft tools and equipment for survival. The survival and exploration aspect game loop in the Breath Edge are similar to that of Subnautica, but they're set in the cold vacuum of space rather than underwater. The game features zero-gravity exploration and a variety of resources to collect, from the basic raw materials to more advanced technological components. One of the unique features of Breath Edge is in its dark humor. The game often pokes fun at the conventions of a survival genre and uses humor to lighten the otherwise dire situation. This contrast is more than the serious tone of Subnautica, although both games have their share of mystery and an intrigue. I have played a bit of Breath Edge on my main YouTube channel, 
Gromforks. In case you're interested to check it out, link will be in the description below. The base building aspect of Subnautica is also present in Breath Edge, but it's more about repairing and upgrading your crashed spaceship than building a new base from scratch. Like Subnautica, Breath Edge offers a progression system where you unlock new blueprints and equipment as you explore further and delve deeper into the game's narrative. While the Breath Edge lacks the diverse biomes and alien creatures of Subnautica, it makes up for it with unique space settings, zero-gravity mechanics and a variety of space debris and satellites to explore. The space setting also adds its own challenges like dealing with radiation and maintaining your oxygen supply. In terms of gameplay and fun factor, Breath Edge gets a 7.5 out of 10. It provides a challenging survival experience with unique space setting and zero gravity mechanics, but it may not offer as much as variety and exploration as Subnautica due to its nature of its environment. For the Subnautica alike score, due to its similar survival mechanics and progression system, it gets a 6 out of 10. Number 3. Influxis. Now this is a game that really hits close to that Subnautica vibe. Like Subnautica, Influxis is an exploration survival game that drops you into an alien world, full of strange and fascinating creatures. In Influxis, you find yourself stranded on an alien planet after your spaceship crashes, similar to the starting premise of Subnautica. The game truly shines in its exploration and discovery aspects. The alien world is beautifully crafted and it teems with a wide variety of biomes, each with its unique flora and fauna. The sense of awe and wonder one feels after discovering a new creature or a biome in Influxis is akin to what one experiences in Subnautica. The base building and crafting in mechanics in Influxis are also reminiscent of that of Subnautica. You can gather resources and use them to build bases, tools and vehicles that will help you survive and explore deeper into the alien world. However, Influxis does differentiate itself from Subnautica in its narrative and setting. While the Subnautica storyline revolves around the mysteries of an ancient civilization, Influxis focuses on the story of our character's survival and the mystery of the alien planet you find yourself on. The setting in Influxis is also less ocean-centric than Subnautica, offering a mix of terrestrial and aquatic environments. Overall, Influxis manages to capture a lot of what makes Subnautica exciting and fun. The exploration of an alien world, the thrill of discovery and the challenge of survival in a strange environment all make Influxis a worthy game for those looking something similar to Subnautica. However, it needs to be said that the game is in very, very early development cycle, but I will be monitoring this one with close interest. I came into expecting a cheap Subnautica ripoff, but I was met with a solidly developed, beautifully crafted game that deserved a place on this list, and when it's done, hopefully will stand on its own. As far as the ratings go, Influxis gets a 7.5 on a gameplay and fun factor thanks to its engaging exploration and survival mechanics, knocked down from a potential 8.5 due to the fact it's not yet finished. On the Subnautica alike score, due to its similarities in its premise, exploration and mechanics, it scores a high 7 out of 10. Number 2. Forever Skies. Forever Skies offers a unique twist to the survival exploration genre that sets it apart from Subnautica while still scratching a similar itch. Instead of plunging into the ocean depths, Forever Skies lifts you up in a post-apocalyptic world where humanity survives on a giant airship that floats above a poisoned earth. The sense of exploration forever skies is akin to that in Subnautica, as the vast skies filled with floating islands offer a similar sense of wonder and discovery. Like Subnautica, you will find resources, encounter strange creatures and uncover the remnants of a fallen civilization. The feeling of exploration, visiting bases, scanning for blueprints is there and very much present. Even the environmental storytelling that we all know and love from Subnautica is present here in the high degree and is in fact the only game on this list that does that in the similar fashion as Subnautica. The base building aspect of Subnautica is mirrored in Forever Skies through an airship customization. Instead of constructing an underwater base, you get to expand and upgrade your airship which serves as your home, workshop and vehicle in the game. Crafting is also a crucial part of the gameplay with various tools, equipment and airship parts to create. Even the tiny details like the sound of a fabricator feels like Subnautica. 
However, Forever Skies sets itself apart within its focus on flight and airship management. Where Subnautica is about diving deeper, Forever Skies is about flying higher and further. You will need to manage your airship's fuel and altitude, and navigate through dangerous weather phenomena. I'm happy to report that by doing so, Falling Skies evokes the same level of dread that can occur in Subnautica's depths. In terms of atmosphere, Forever Skies leans more towards steampunk aesthetics, contrasting with Subnautica's alien ocean world. However, both games share a sense of solitude, as you are alone in a vast, beautiful and dangerous world. I have started to pl a Let's Play of Forever Skies on this channel and expect to continue on it soon. For its engaging exploration, airship customization and unique setting, Forever Skies gets an 8 out of 8.5 out of 10 in gameplay and fun factors. As for the Subnautica alike score, due to its similar survival exploration base building mechanics, as well as storytelling, it gets a 7.5 out of 10. Number 1. The Planet Crafter. The Planet Crafter is an upcoming survival game that shares many similarities with Subnautica, particularly in terms of its gameplay mechanics, exploration, research collection, base building, and the general feel that the game evokes. Like Subnautica, the Planet Crafter takes place in an alien world, but this time it's barren, inhospitable planet. The primary goal is to terraform this desolate world into a lush, habitable environment. The scale of the game's environment is massive, with a variety of unique biomes to explore and terraform, each presenting its own unique challenges and opportunities. The base building aspect of Subnautica is well represented in the Planet Crafter. You can construct a variety of structures, such as greenhouses, factories and living quarters, each with their own specific purpose in the terraforming process. The game also introduces a new mechanic not present in Subnautica, the ability to alter the planet's atmosphere, temperature and biosphere through your actions and creations. The game also shares Subnautica's emphasis on resource gathering and crafting. You will need to mine resources from the planet crust, gather rare elements from its atmosphere and even create a new life form through the genetic engineering. The Planet Crafter, however, offers a different narrative experience. While Subnautica is deeply rooted in mystery and uncovering an ancient alien civilization, the Planet Crafter narrative is more about a struggle of mankind against the elements and the quest to create a new home in the stars. For its innovative terraforming mechanics, engaging base building and expansive world, the Planet Crafter gets an 8 out of 10 in gameplay and fun factor. And as for Subnautica alike score, the, its similar survival, exploration, base building mechanics and the general feeling it evokes, it gets a high 8.5 out of 10. Coming up to the honorable mention. We are talking about the game called Pacific Drive. Pacific Drive is an upcoming first-person driving survival game that creates a unique take on the survival genre, quite different from the Subnautica's underwater exploration. Instead of exploring an alien underwater world in Pacific Drive, you navigate the surreal version of the Pacific Northwest in your station wagon, facing supernatural dangers as you venture into the Olympic exclusion zone. Like Subnautica, Pacific Drive emphasizes the exploration and survival. You have to scavenge resources to upgrade and customize your vehicle, similar to how would you gather resources for base building in Subnautica. Both games feature environments that present unique challenges and require you to adapt and survive. However, unlike Subnautica's alien creatures and underwater environments, the danger in Pacific Drive come from anomalies and supernatural forces in the post-apocalyptic setting. The narrative in Pacific Drive, like in Subnautica, revolves now about uncovering the mysteries of an isolated area, in this case Olympic Exclusion Zone. However, Pacific Drive sets itself apart with a focus on car mechanics and driving, a stark contrast to Subnautica's swimming and diving mechanics. In terms of gameplay, both games has, has, share a similar cycle of exploration, resource collection and upgrading. However, Pacific Drive presents a unique twist with its focus on vehicle customization and management, contrasting with Subnautica's base building and underwater exploration. To conclude, while Pacific Drives and Subnautica share some similarities in their core gameplay mechanics and emphasis on mystery and exploration, they offer distinctly different experiences due to their contrasting environments and thematic focus. 
Will Pacific Drive be able to scratch that Subnautica inch or not? And to what degree remains to be seen? One thing is for sure, given early previews, it's gonna be one hell of a survival game and I cannot wait to play it. And there we have it, nine games that help scratch Subnautica itch. From the harsh snowy wilderness of the long dark to the vast expanse of the no man's sky, each of these games brings a unique twist to the exploration and survival genre. We have seen everything from the underwater exploration to the floating islands in the sky, and from the alien worlds to the post-apocalyptic Earth. Whether it's base building mechanics, the exploration, or the survival elements that you loved about Subnautica, there's a game on this list for you. So don't let that Subnautica itch go unscratched. Check out these games and dive back into the world of exploration survival. Thank you for joining me on this journey through these games. If you've played them, any of them, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you know any of the other games that could scratch that Subnautica itch, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Happy gaming and I'll see you in my next video.